The purpose of this video is to review over the anatomy of the eye. And uh, the dissection that we will be using is the sheep eye. However, a cow eye uh, would be just as sufficient and the uh, anatomical structures would carry over just as easily. Now the first thing we will do when we receive our sheep eye is you will notice that many times it will be covered in the yellow fat material and sometimes it will still have the eyelid and the eyelashes present. And so you will need to use your scissors and to remove all of that fat tissue and to remove the, the eyelid and the eyelashes. And you want to continue to do so until your eye looks very similar to this diagram that we have here. Now looking at this diagram, we'll have our cornea, which is that clear covering over the eye. The white of the eye is the sclera, and it's much thicker than what you would think. At the back of the eye, we have the optic nerve. And I do want you to spend a couple of minutes, and I want you to look at that optic nerve and to feel it. Many people believe that nerves are extremely fragile. And if you will feel this nerve, you will feel that it is not fragile at all. It's actually very thick. And there are some species of dogs, especially those, those bug-eyed dogs, where the eye can literally pop out of the socket, and it's being held in place by that optic nerve. A vet can go in and pop the eye back in place and the dog would have perfect vision because that nerve is um, very thick and very durable. Now in addition to seeing that thick um, uh, fat layer, you'll also see some brown tissue and that's going to be the remnants of various muscles that control the eye and they move the eye up and down and right and left. So again, here we see that optic nerve, and we see how thick that optic nerve is, and we can see some remnants of some of those extrinsic muscles that move the eye, uh, white of the eye being the sclera. Here we have that anterior portion, and we can see the cornea. The opening of the cornea is the pupil, and again, we can see that white or that sclera of the eye. Now when you're ready to do your dissection, you want to have a, a sharp, scalpel blade. We're going to situate the eye as such in the picture and we're going to cut through and we're going to um, separate the eye into an anterior and posterior section. Now the eye is very much like a cherry tomato. If you bite into a cherry tomato very quickly it will squirt all in your mouth. If you cut this too quickly that fluid within the eye will squirt all over your face. So you want to take your time and make small incisions until you nick the uh, inside of the eye and you release that pressure. Once you've done so, it will no longer squirt at you and you can just make that incision and cut it into that anterior and posterior sections. And as you open the eye, you're going to see this thick, jello-like material that was inside the eye. That's the vitreous humor. That's what helps keep the eye's uh, shape intact. You're also going to see this round structure here, and that's the lens of the eye. If you take that lens out and you use your probe and you smash it and it's not going to squish, it's not going to smash, it's hard, but you'll break off sections of it and it'll be little strips, you will see what, what pure protein fibers look like. And the lens of the eye is the only part of the body that cannot get cancer. So here we have the, uh, the view of the uh, inside of the eye again, where we have that lens and we've got that vitreous humor. And you're going to see this rigid area right here. Now just to orientate yourself, this is the front of the eye, and right here on the other side would be the cornea. Well, this rigid structure right there is the ciliary body. Now this is the part of the eye that connects the iris to the choroid, and it's the part of the eye that helps to control the shape of the lens and helps for focusing. This right here, this tan layer, is the retina of the eye. And one of the things I want you to see is the retina is laid out flat. And so what we have going on is if we take this retina and we were to peel this up, it's attached in one location, and that's called the optic disc. Now if the retina tears away from that one section, we have a detached retina. 
And so what we have is if you were to take a very sharp pointer and you were to stab right through that point and to go all the way through to the other side of the sheep eye, you would see that it goes right into the optic nerve. And so if we uh, review back over brain anatomy, from the brain we have the optic tract and as the optic tract comes out and they cross we have the optic chiasma and then from the optic chiasma it continues up as the optic nerve and so that optic nerve comes from the brain and goes all the way to the back of the eye and once it enters the eye that no longer is called the optic nerve but rather it spreads out and it makes this layer known as the retina and this retina is the photoreceptor of the eye and it contains two types of cells known as rods and cones. The rods function mainly in dim light and provide black and white vision. The cones support daytime vision and give perception of color. Now below the eye we're going to have our highly vascularized layer known as the choroid. So we're going to move to the next slide and look at the choroid. So here we have the retina and we're going to move that aside and then we're going to have this deep pigmented vascular layer and this is known as the choroid and the choroid is what supplies nutrients to this interior portion of the eye. Now you'll also notice that there's this nice pretty color right here and this pretty color that you see is called the tapetum lucidum. This layer is not present in humans but it is present in many uh, various mammals. Now this layer right here reflects light back. So if you've ever seen an animal and their eyes have glowed back at you, the tapetum lucidum layer is that colored layer that is glowing back at you. And this helps to contribute to better night vision in the animals. So it helps for seeing in the dark. Again, this is going to be the inside of the anterior portion or the front part of the, uh, the eye and we can see that ciliary body and we can see the opening as the pupil and the lens would be held in place here and it would be behind the iris Now the iris is the color of the eyes so if you have blue eyes or brown eyes that's the color of your iris and finally uh, because I've used a, a lot of large terms I do want to show you um, the structures of the eye labeled and so the white of the eye that we would see would be the sclera and the covering is called the cornea the opening is the pupil uh, the color of the eye is the iris here we have the lens it's made up of pure protein it's held uh, in place and shaped by the ciliary body this back area the fluid is the vitreous humor and it helps maintain the shape of the eye the photoreceptive layer of the eye is the retina it's attached in one area and that uh, area is the optic disc and it goes directly back to the optic nerve the, the choroid which is that pigmented layer is right here it is in between the sclera which is the white of the eye and the retina which is the brown photoreceptive layer the pretty color that you would see embedded in the choroid is the tapetum lucidum present in mammals uh, where their eyes glow back at you such as your cats and your deer not present in humans and so review over the anatomy of the eye and if you have any questions feel free to contact me and we will review over that material